alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, uh, I wanted to address a question that's been asked by Muslims throughout the world. And that is, how do I keep myself motivated? Many people are saying, you know, now we're almost halfway there. And naturally, you know, I'm finding myself not as motivated as I was in the beginning. Usually at the beginning, you know, there's a lot of vigor, a lot of energy, and at the end, and that's obviously very important, uh, our ending, that we end with our greatest push. Um, but this middle period, period that we're in now, sometimes we struggle. So what can we do? Well, there are uh, a lot of ways to look at it and a lot of answers and a lot of specific answers uh, to answer this concern or this question or this issue. However, I thought if we simply reflect upon some of the fruits, some of the benefits, some of the lessons and messages of the month of Ramadan and of fasting, then inshallah, this in and of itself would encourage us and would give us a great deal of motivation. So what I want to do, inshallah, is just remind us of the beautiful fruits and impacts, the effects of the month of Ramadan. The very first thing is discipline. You know, the word som means to restrain, to hold back. And so we are learning this control. We are fighting our greatest desires, our desires to eat and drink and intimacy and to hoard money. All of these things we are working on in the month of Ramadan. And the Shia team, for the most part, are chained. And so we're fighting our nafs our selves and discipline is something that obviously helps us with being successful discipline is something that is valued by everyone it's valued in the classroom it's valued in the military it's valued in the organization it is something everyone is trying to capture and get discipline is valued on the uh, in the field, meaning the sports arena and the bas basketball course, everyone is trying to teach discipline. So let us think about this. Alhamdulillah, we are gaining discipline, gaining control. And if we think about this and we fast with this understanding, this focus, then inshallah, um, we this discipline will be more developed obviously we want this discipline to be outside of the month of ramadan as well but no doubt this is part of the message of ramadan this is part of the fruits of ramadan that you conquer or have more control over yourself and we see this um from leaders to athletes to celebrities politicians, um, they desire more control, usually, <laughs> that is, of themselves and this discipline. So we should focus on this. And again, the word even psalm itself means discipline. And if we have this discipline, it will lead to greater and better and bigger and better things, um, others, other fruits. Uh, one of them being taqwa, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this fasting. And this in, in and of itself is a, a beautiful uh, point that fasting is something that has been made obligatory upon all of humanity, those that were before us as well as us uh, as well. And we see fasting, some form of it, and throughout Asia, throughout South America, throughout the Europe, throughout all of these religions, uh, 
they value fasting. And it's primarily not for the physical benefits, right? The health benefits. People fast because of that discipline, because of that spiritual, uh, those spiritual benefits. So this is something that we should think about. So along with discipline and self-restraint, I want to give or mention one of the fruits of motivation and willpower. SubhanAllah, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that, you know, he was excited for the month of Ramadan. Two months before the month of Ramadan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in countdown mode, right? He is saying, oh Allah, bless our Rajab, bless our Sha'ban, and let us see the month of Ramadan. So everyone is excited. You know, you have kids who are excited about Disneyland, excited about the graduation, excited about the last day of school, and then they're in countdown mode. They're excited. Likewise, the believers are excited too about this month. And even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their year revolved around the month of Ramadan. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told, told us and used to tell his companions before the coming of Ramadan why he was excited. He mentioned to us that the doors of paradise are open, the gates of paradise are open, and they are futihad, and they are swung wide open, and not one door is closed, he mentioned. So emphasizing the doors are open, and the doors of hellfire are tightly shut and not one door is open. So this gives us hope and it builds our willpower, build our motivation. And we should think about this as well, especially in the middle part of Ramadan, that the gates of paradise are closed. You cannot see them but it's important for you to know that they're open. Why? Because this is encouraging. This motivates us. This gives us this drive and this motivation for paradise, this land in which we can have whatever we want, this land in which your dream come true, your desires are fulfilled, your wishes are granted, this land of eternal bliss, the gates, the gates are open right now for it. And this land, again, that most of mankind believes, believes in, believe in. And either it will be paradise or hellfire. So we should visualize the gates of paradise then open. This motivates us. And this is part of this lump. Throughout the Quran, Allah describes the, the situation of the believers to motivate us. And the pillar of Hajj, Allah tells us about, uh, or we reenact and, and remember um, Prophet Ibrahim, السلام, someone who had immense willpower in order for us to try to emulate him. So no doubt this is a message that we should be thinking about, and this is one of the fruits of the month of Ramadan. Additionally, one of the fruits of the month of Ramadan is forgiveness, and this is something that should motivate us and cause us great happiness and joy and cause us not to grow tired of fasting. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and perhaps the most famous hadith, Man Sama Ramadan, the most famous hadith about uh, Ramadan. Almost everyone <laughs> has heard it thousands of times, literally, but it's a beautiful hadith. Whoever fasts the month of Ram, the month of Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with Iman, with this devotion, with this conviction, with iman, wahtisaban, and looking forward to the reward. He is imagining and desiring and looking forward and striving for the reward. What is the reward? His previous sins will be forgiven. Does that not motivate someone? Does that not 
push us uh, and help us reach those last 10 nights, forgiveness. All those mistakes will be forgiven. And we have to remember, Allah is not demanding from us perfection, but rather submission. So as long as we keep on asking Allah for forgiveness and fulfilling the conditions of forgiveness, Allah will forgive us. So forgiveness is a big key. We also were told whoever man qama Ramadan, whoever prays in the month of Ramadan with Iman and looking forward to the to, to the reward, his or her sins are forgiven. And whoever stands in the night of Laylatul Qadr, his or her uh, sins will be forgiven. Forgiven. So forgiveness is a theme of the month of Ramadan. It's a fruit of the month of Ramadan. And as a matter of fact, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he made dua against one who does not get forgiven in the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Ameen. This is a very serious, heavy, profound uh, hadith that how can you not have your sins forgiven when in the month of Ramadan, that's what you're focusing on. In the month of Ramadan, we're trying to grow closer to Allah. In the month of Ramadan, we're trying to become better people. In the month of Ramadan, we are squeezing ourselves. We are sacrificing. We are disciplining ourselves. And so we're constantly, constantly asking Allah for forgiveness. And at this time, because we're so conscious about it, and because we're constantly seeking forgiveness, and because this month is so blessed, that many will be forgiven. And this brings us to our next fruit, and that is zikr. That is being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the fruits, one of the great benefits of the month of Ramadan is that we are our consciousness, our taqwa, our awareness of Allah is heightened in the month of Ramadan. And this is a great benefit. And as a matter of fact, some scholars said the best fast is the fast in which Allah is remembered the most. Because if you are mindful of Allah, then more than likely you'll be mindful of your responsibilities to Allah and to humanity. You're mindful of your action. You're mindful of your destination, meaning that you understand that life is temporary and you begin to treat life as if it's temporary. All of this is a product of being mindful of Allah. And so this is the beautiful uh gym the beautiful fruit that is produced in the month of ramadan that we are more mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something that we need uh to always focus on as a matter of fact after every prayer we say allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik after every prayer we ask for three things we ask Allah to help us, aid us in being more mindful of him, him, remembering him, mentioning him, and being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, performing our uh, ibadah, our worship uh, beautifully. So uh, this is one of the fruits of the month of Ramadan is being mindful. Another fruit that we just mentioned, um, and that is the utilization, the utilization of time. We're more conscious of time, right? We wake up at a specific time um, for our suhoor and our fajr prayer. We're conscious uh, of our prayers, and those are based upon time. We're conscious of iftar, and so. Uh, we, again, our awareness of time become heightened. And whenever we can manage time, can treat time as a, and value time, then we will be successful. And this is something that's hard. And this is something that we are just like discipline. We're drilled from the time we're young. You know, we're even graded on how we uh, use our time in kindergarten. 
and throughout <clears throat> our uh, school, we are told to manage time, to do your time. You know, you can have extracurricular, you can do your homework, and you can play and do all these things, but you have to balance all of this and manage, manage your time. Even when we become adults, right? We have all these time management classes. And one of the most uh, sold book or read books um, uh, title or genre is about managing time. Uh, so this is something that is difficult and Ramadan uh, helps us to manage time, to reflect upon time, and to understand that time is limited. Every day we see how quick the time is moving, and we see how quick we're already in the middle of Ramadan, and so this creates this awareness that our time on the world is is limited, and we have to work, and we have to work as if today could be our last day, as Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said, don't be tricked by time. When he said, ni'matan maqboonun fihi ma kafirun min nas there are two blessings, two good things that Allah blesses us with, but many people are tricked, duped, deceived by them. They fall victim to these blessings. That is a sihah to al good health and free time. Because the way we abuse time is that we think that we have more of it. So we say, you know, I have more time. I have more time. And even Allah mentions on the day of judgment, people will ask for more time. We'll ask Allah to send them back, give them more time so that they can fix, rectify their life. Time is limited. The time is now. So we have to act as if we have little or no time. And we have to act also with the health that we have now. Uh, there will come a day when we are not healthy and we won't be able to act. We won't be able to fast, perhaps. We won't be able to pray standing up, perhaps. We won't be able to make hajj. We won't be able to do the things that we can now when we are in the blessing of good health and free time. Which brings me to another fruit, is, and that is that in the month of Ramadan, we are blessed with making, forming routines, and routines are a blessing. Uh, however, you know, we shouldn't make that routine just simply ritualistic. But that's what makes the, the fasting so easy. You become accustomed to it. Your schedule is you wake up at a certain time, you eat at a certain time. Even your body becomes accustomed to it. Routine is good. So we establish these routines in the month of Ramadan. And they say, you know, motivation gets you started. Routine keeps you going. And so we have both motivation in the month of Ramadan and we have routine. And a beautiful thing too that we didn't mention when we talked about discipline, but go, what goes along with discipline is, and this is another fruit of the month of Ramadan, is dedication, devotion, loyalty, submission. All of these are part of fasting because when you fast, you're sacrificing. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us or in the Hadith Qudsi, uh, 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 the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that fasting is special. All the deeds are for uh, Adam, uh, the sons of Adam, uh, humanity, except for fasting. Allah will personally reward us. One, because it is, it, 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 it is a secret act in essence. No one truly knows if you are fasting or have, if you have broken your fast. But also, uh, it is an act of dedication, devotion. So one of the fruits of the month of Ramadan, one of the fruits of fasting, it is that it makes your dedication more intense and heightened and focus upon, emphasize all of these uh, words. So dedication commitment, loyalty, it becomes at a premium in the month of Ramadan.
and we're focusing on this. And if, as long as we, we know why we are doing these things and we are truly fasting for the sake of Allah, then we will be tremendously blessed. And this world, we know that dedication leads to success. And many people, they struggle with this, just like we, we um, struggle, mankind in general, we struggle with discipline, we struggle with dedication. But when we have dedication, when we have devotion, when we have loyalty, when we have buy-in and commitment, it leads to success, right? And it leads to purpose, right? And it leads to passion. And we see this with those people who are successful, be they politicians, be they athletes, be they whatever it is, authors, people who have, they're dedicated, they have this passion and they're successful. So this is another fruit of the month of Ramadan as well is that we um, it will increase our dedication, which will increase, inshallah, our iman, and it will increase our chances of being successful in this world and the hereafter. So if we can get devotion, and people, they, the uh, non-Muslims just admire that. They admire that people, subhanAllah, pray five times a day. I remember when I first became Muslim, I became Muslim very young. And, and when I was in high school and everyone was like, wow, this commitment, this discipline, fasting five times a day, excuse me, <laughs> praying five times a day, fasting for 30 days or 29 days. And, you know, many supervisors and bosses, if you have to pray, they're, they, they don't have a problem with it because they like this commitment. And they think, if, wow, if you have this loyalty, something that is so elusive and so uh, hard to, to get uh, or to find that part of that loyalty will benefit them. If this person is dedicated to his Lord, Lord and to and his faith, then they believe that they will get uh, benefit from that as well. And I've heard many non-Muslims, uh, you know, been very impressed by the dedication, the devotion that Muslims are asked to have or that they see. Um, so this is a a, a beautiful thing. And what I'm trying to say is that all these things that I'm mentioning, for the most part, you see them, the reward, the fruit in this world, utilization of time, routine, being mindful. Being mindful gets, just gives you purpose again, being mindful of Allah, and it gives you this tranquility. Uh, we mentioned discipline, uh, forgiveness, eh, there's a benefit in this world, but perhaps mostly in the hereafter. But most of these things, willpower, all these fruits that we mentioned today are fruits that can be eaten and consumed right now and, and, and enjoyed as well as in the hereafter. Um, maybe just two more points and we'll close. Um, one, obviously, alhamdulillah, we are, uh, we should be uh, grateful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran praises the prophets for their gratitude. And he mentioned most wa qalilun min ibadi shukur Few true uh, people reach the level of gratitude. Um, and Allah praises this characteristic, this virtue throughout the Quran, many different places. Um, and Ramadan is something that helps us develop gratitude, obviously, if we truly focus on it. And again, just like being mindful, just like being mindful of, of Allah, we ask Allah uh, after each prayer, we ask Allah also not just to help us be mindful of him, but to help us be thankful to him and thankful in general. And we have a lot to be thankful for, for. even in this corona, post-corona world that we are living in, uh, or this uh, world in which we are dealing with this pandemic, there's a lot. I mean, we're still here, we're Muslims, uh, many of us have our jobs, or we have some benefits. There are many people who don't. So if we just, um, and more than likely in the month of Ramadan, you're more likely to reflect. So this is a great benefit as well, being grateful. Uh, lastly, 
we in the month of Ramadan, I mentioned this earlier, one of the fruits is that we think about what is at stake. Um, we think about paradise and hellfire. We mentioned paradise a little bit, but also hellfire. I mean, for we are told, that fasting has been made obligatory upon you, just like it has been made obligatory upon those before you, so that perhaps you may achieve taqwa, this God consciousness, this healthy fear uh, of Allah, this piety. And taqwa is a mindset. It is a guard or, uh, or protection. You are protecting yourself from that which you fear, which is hellfire, which is Allah's wrath. So one of the benefits of Ramadan is that you live life. You assume a mindset that will protect you from hellfire. And Allah says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدَخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسِ And whoever is, escapes the hellfire, is, uh, eludes the hellfire. And this is what we're trying to do, to develop taqwa, which is a way, a means, a mindset to escape hellfire. And Allah tells us, after he says that everyone would taste of death, just like the previous imam mentioned, everyone would die. And we know that. So, but, but the true success, the grades will only really be given in the hereafter, yom al qiyamah. And then Allah tells us what are, what is pass and fail. Whoever is removed from hellfire, and is entered in paradise, he has passed. He is triumphant. He is victorious. And as for this world, it is only uh, pleasure. And, it's delusional pleasure. I mean, it's good. Nothing's wrong with enjoying this world. But as the previous imam mentioned, also not making it our greatest akbar ahamina, our greatest concern. Um, so because just like we see now, people who had lots of money, many different small businesses, and even big businesses, where are they now? Um, and no matter how much money, no matter what, it could leave you at any moment, and and um, and you could die at any moment, and and you never really have that true comfort, unlike the hereafter. So Allah tells us that this is success, the hereafter, and the month of Ramadan. One of the greatest fruits that it gives us is that we focus on paradise and hellfire, as Allah says, you know, that this taqwa and which is throughout the Quran Allah says that the that the that jannah paradise is prepared for those who gain taqwa those servants who achieve taqwa this consciousness and piety may Allah allow us to achieve taqwa may Allah allow us to be successful in this world and to here, hereafter. May Allah accept our fasting. May Allah accept our prayers. And may Allah allow us to help many others be successful in this world as well as the hereafter. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.